moral agent, a free person, you know, I'm free, I'm free. I'm not talking about, I'm just talking about in, in, in areas of our lives where me, where we may come to that point of, you know, me, should I do this? Should I not do that? You know, even if something is lawful, even if, I mean, because my Lord, if you go through the laws in any state, country, you know, city, locality, burg, whatever, parish, you know, province, anywhere throughout the world, you know that laws have changed. Laws have changed over the years. You know, one thing is not lawful, the next year it is lawful, right? I mean, take for example, uh, marijuana, uh, smoking weed, marijuana, right? Well, years and years ago, it was not legal. Now we have some places where it is legal, here in the United States, some states, yes, some states, no, some cities, yes, some cities, no. I mean, so we really cannot go, we cannot really conduct our lives based on what society deems as legal or lawful. We being citizens of the most high God, citizens of the kingdom of Christ, should be acting like we are members and citizens of his kingdom. Therefore, following his laws, all of his laws. You know what I've, you know what I've said about that. But, but if we just take this particular scripture and we look at it and we say, all things are lawful. So, so in other words, you could, you, you may do anything, right? But all things are not expedient. They're not beneficial. Now, you, you can sit and drink 10 Coca-Colas or 10 cups of coffee or 10 root beer or beer or 10 bottles of wine or whatever. You could do it, right? I mean, no one's going to sit there and, you know, bop you over the head if you, if you do it. You could do it. But is it good for you? Is it expedient? Right? Is it constructive? Is it part of the character that you want to edify God and your spiritual life? Right? So all all these things are, are permissible, but are they beneficial? Are they good? So knowing that, knowing that God knows you and you are supposed to be learning about him, then it should make it clear because I had a comment uh, on one person was asking, you know, how do I know, you know, whether I should do this or that thing. And so I want to just put that there. And of course, we've talked about uh, walking in the spirit and uh, becoming more like Christ. So clearly, if behaviors, if if, if, if certain behaviors and activities uh, do not edify, do not cause you to worship God in your life, uh, and in, in, in your witness to others about Christ, then though they may be lawful, though they may be permissible, they may not be for you to do. Much as, you know, there have been a lot of different fashions that come out. You know, a lot of different fashions. And unfortunately for women, you know, the fashions are just kind of, you know, really crazy. But some fashions... Like, for example, you know, the really short, 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 short shorts <laughs> that some people will wear. You know, are those short, 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 short shorts meant for every body? I mean, you know, every body. Uh, tall, short, you know, fat, skinny. Are they meant for every body? No. Probably the reason that they don't come in all sizes, right? But at any rate, they're there, right? I mean, you could go buy it. It's like, you know, there's all kinds of shoes out there. But just because they make them doesn't mean that you ought to wear them. I mean, we just got to be, you know, using our minds because God gave us a mind. God gave us a sound mind, the word of God says. All right, so let's get it, getting back to these, uh, uh, addressing some of the... Um, the seven uh, year period, as I was talking about, a day is 
A day with God is a year, year is a day, especially when we're thinking about prophetic times. And so this 70th week that Daniel uh, has, has given testimony to in the book of Daniel is now where we are uh, in this seven-day period uh, that the book of Revelation focuses on. So ready? Here we go. Here's, here's the list. In the first three and a half years, <clears throat> because you have the seven year, right? So in the middle, that's three and a half. And the first three years, three and a half years, these are some things that are occurring. And I'm going to give you the, the scriptures that go along with them as I go through. So um, I'm going to try to do that slowly so that you can get all of them. Um, and I hope that in your, in your own study time, you will have a chance to review these scriptures. So here we go. In the first three and a half years of that seven-year period, Israel is living in peace in the land. That starts out with Ezekiel 38 and 8. Then temple sacrifices are restarted. We see this in Revelation 11, 1 through 2. Now we've already read this far. The world church, that the church as we know it now, and remember we read about the messages to the seven churches, right? Again, that number seven. Uh, we read and, and there were only two churches that God was most pleased with, uh, the Lord, as he was talking to John. Um, so, the world church. Now, when I say the world church, what are we talking about? Remember, we talked about how um, much of the church today has fallen away from, gotten away from, the true word of God. And uh, in the Bible, that is spoken of as an apostasy uh, the apostasy, in other words, going against the word. So uh, the world church begins to dominate in religion and uh, is really taking the lead of the Antichrist. And so we have begun to see this. I mean, even in some of our own churches, you begin to see these kinds of idea, worldly ideas seeping into the church behaviors and activities. Uh, as I've mentioned to you before, some churches look more like, um, you know, movie theaters and, 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 and discotheques, clubs, all dark and, you know, stuff flashing. And I'm not sure that that is, I don't, I don't really know. I, I don't think that that is the best way to present the word of God. So, but, you know, a lot of these things are coming into the church where the church now has become more like the world than the world becoming like the church. So the world in the world's church in these latter days are uh, are acceding, giving over their authority to Satan and Satan's worship and activities, all of these pagan holidays, the emphasis on pagan holidays, pa pagan activities, uh, worldly man-made traditions, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that we've talked about, that begins to dominate. We uh, that is in Revelation 17. Not not a very good uh, commentary on the church. Then Gog, who is Gog? Gog is Satan and the Antichrist spirit, and his uh, his minions, his affiliates, his friends begin to invade Palestine, and they are invading Palestine from the north. Ezekiel 38. Verse 2, 5 through 6, and 22. Uh, Gog, the Antichrist, and his allies destroy, are, are, are ultimately destroyed by God. That is also in Ezekiel 38, 17 through 23. Now, if you if you have been paying attention to some of the uh, geopolitical worldly events, and you have seen, undoubtedly, uh, some folks talking about initiating peace agreements in Israel. Uh, so that goes back to this first uh, comment that I made, uh, Israel living in peace in their land, uh, because they will be under the impression 
that there is peace, that there's no need, they can let their guard down, they can relax, okay, they're now at peace, All no one is invading them or, or, or causing war with them, and, and you see the beginning stages of these peace agreements uh, between nations, uh, particularly in the Middle East, uh, being put into place. We don't know if it's the peace agreement, but we know that there's some efforts to put those things into place. We and and simultaneously, mind you, I mean, happening at the same time, we also see Russia fighting in Syria against ISIS, and then simultaneously we see the U.S. aiding and fighting against those who Russia is supporting. You know, you've heard them talked about the U.S. trainers, uh, the U.S. helpers, you know, the, the, U, the U.S. Um, folks that are going in to assist, you know, with certain exercises and so forth to help the other side. Well, who are they helping? They're helping the people that Russia is fighting against. So, in essence, you have the U.S. actually fighting against Russia. I mean, right? <laughs> okay. I mean, just that's kind of a uh, logic, a logic statement. So, all right. So then, so then, next things that begin to happen: Satan is cast down from heaven, and uh, this this being cast out from heaven is energizing. Uh, the whole Antichrist spirit that we see prevalent. And you'll find this in Revelation 12, 12 through 17. And we, we spoke about this. And this is um, this, again, is in the first three and a half years. The Antichrist breaks the promise of pre peace that he has entered, that peace agreement that he entered, entered into with Israel that gets broken. And the sacrifices are going to be stopped. Now, this is in Daniel 9. Specifically, Daniel 9, verse 27. And just recently, over in Israel, um, a lot of the uh, the Sanhedrin, the 70 uh, uh, folks, priests over there, are um, they are preparing a sacrifice. They're preparing to start up sacrifices, and they've even um, come close to making agreements um, about where this these temple sacrifices can occur, and that they actually they don't need the actual temple grounds, and they're making all kinds of concessions about being able to start these um, these sacrifices. And one of the reasons for that is that they have some historical evidence uh, that if they start these sacrifices, they may cause uh, people are trying to. Con- can, you know, trying to um, persuade them that if they do these sacrifices, those sacrifices will heal everybody from COVID. Okay, so they're 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 working their way up to uh, trying to start these sacrifices again. The same sacrifices that eventually the Antichrist, the Antichrist, the person, the Antichrist, not just the spirit, right, of the Antichrist, will soon want to stop. Okay, so then there are ten, 10 kings under the Antichrist who destroy the world's church. Now, this is in Revelation 17, 16 through 18. Then uh, we discussed the 144,000, uh, the 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes being saved and being seated in heaven. That's in Revelation 7, 1 through 8. And so you can see now here that these scriptures, though they're occurring during this first three and a half years, they are not necessarily in a chronological order. Rather, they overlay one another. Okay, so let's go on. In the last three and a half years, uh, the Great Tribulation, Revelation 7, 14, Matthew 24, 21, Daniel 12 and 1, Jeremiah 30 and 7. So the rebellion, that apostasy that I was speaking of, the apostasy, uh, the rebellion against truth, the rebellion against 
those who would follow Christ, the rebellion against those churches that are speaking truth, that are preaching truth, is prevalent. 